Okay, so idea is to start a new journey in artificial intelligence. Before that, we will see whatever we have done. That is our creativity. So whatever we have done till now, whatever is we have learned from or we have taken from other places, and what is our creativity in calculus in other areas before we enter into bias theorem. So, like I say that that. Uh, uh, register is the uh, electronics is game of resistance. Similarly, machine learning enters through bias theorem. From there, actually machine learning enters. And everything is expansion of bias theorem only. Because it talks about orthogonal component. So everything is orthogonal only. If someone see neural network or natural language processing and then to bias theorem. So everything is more or less or give of orthogonal components only. Prior to that, before entering into that, then better we would do whatever we have done from ourselves. In that, we will see in calculus the Lagrange multiplier, I believe that is the name. Before that, we will take a kind of little trivial topic that is what is a number? Because if we see the hierarchy, the numerical science is base of the mathematics. Numerical science, numerical science is the base of mathematics. And on top of numerical science, so numerical science is base of mathematics. And on top of numerical science, on top of numerical science, then we have algebra and on top of numerical science we have algebra and on top of algebra then we have many things we have calculus that operates on algebra and then we have vector vector algebraic vector on top of algebra calculus manipulates over algebra whereas the vector field or algebraic vector, it kind of adds to it to the algebra. Now algebra, it, it works numerical science, algebra. From algebra, there is one arrow goes to calculus that operates on algebra. And from algebra, another arrow goes toward algebraic vector. Now algebra, algebra term itself can be in different coordinate system. So numerical science, numerical science on top of it algebra with different coordinate system. One arrow goes to calculus which manipulates on algebra. One arrow goes as extension to the algebra that is algebraic vector. This is what we have seen. And in the algebra, in, in the algebra, now we have kind of various coordinate system that is in, that is in algebra. Like if I say x, y, x, y, z, actually we are talking about Cartesian coordinate system x, y, z. If I am talking about r theta, we are talking about polar coordinate system, but all are algebra only. And then if we are talking about r theta z, then it is cylindrical coordinate system. If we are talking about theta r phi, then we are talking about a spherical coordinate system. So numerical signs, algebra. Algebra in terms of many coordinate system, one arrow goes calculus which manipulates over algebra and extension to the algebra is algebraic vector or vector field. This is what we have seen till now. And in that, so many things we see, we saw as far as calculus is concerned, directional derivative, amazing, directional derivative, line integral. Surface integral, d, d surface by d surface, d volume by d volume, amazing. D line by d line, and we understand dx by dy by dx, dxy plane by du, I am sorry, means that d surface by d surface where both surfaces are in different coordinate system, where Jacobian comes into the picture. Now, if that is the scenario, then what we can now progress, 
here is that now we have talked a lot about algebra on top of it. Little bit we will talk about numerical science. So numerical science, a num numerical science, there is it is also called number game, number science. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. These are kind of a, someone can say integer in computer sense. It is integer or a whole number. These are decimal numbers. So, or number can be in fraction or floating in computer sense. So, like 3.5, 1.42. So, these are fraction. 1.414141414, whatever. So, number can be either a complete number, whole number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. There is, there is no fraction in it. Or it can be in fraction, 1.5, 6.2 or something like that. But still, fraction can be represented in a whole number. Okay. Fraction can be represented in whole number. What about 1.5? 1.5 is a fraction. Is it not a number? No, it is not a number. I can prove it. Is it a number? It is a number. 3 by 2. 1.5 can be represented at why we are talking about numerical science. If I take mathematics, the 99% power is given to numerical science. In 1% only, algebra and different coordinate system and calculus and vector field is there. 99% power is given to numerical science. One or more than that. If person is not strong in numerical science, basic numerical science, multiplication, division, and then it's called, in India it is called Pahara, means 19th ja, 19th ja or whatever, or 29, 28, 29, 28 multiplied by 2, 3, 4, 5, up to 10. If that much someone does not know what is 25 into 1.25 or something like that, what is 1.25, fourth quarter of 25, immediately you have to reply. If somebody is asking what is quarter of 28, immediately you have to reply. What is quarter of 78, immediately you have to reply. Immediately. Okay. This is called power of numerical science. If someone is weak in power of numerical science, then certainly he cannot proceed much in the mathematics. Higher level of mathematics, they sit on the lower level only. Now, now the question arises is, then everything is a ra rational number. Anything is a rational num number, means anything is a really a number. I am saying, I am saying that kind of the number is 1.4. 1.4, then someone would say it is not a number. It is a fraction. Now, 1.4. Four, I believe, is it 7 by 5? Yes, it is 7 by 5. 1.4 is 7 by, indeed it is 7 by 5. This is a, if it is not a whole number, people they categorize into a rational number. 1.4 1, 1 is a rational number. Okay, if that is the case, now people can proceed. 1.3, okay, what about 1.3. Someone can try. It is, is it, can be brought in something divided by something. 1.1.3. Okay. So, I believe it will come as, if I denominator, if I take 5, then numerator will be, if numerator is, will be 6.5. 5. 6.5 5 by 5. Then it will be 13 by 10. 13 by 10 is 1.3. Okay, so 1.3 is if it is not a whole number, at least it is a rational number. Can someone try square root of 2 is a rational number or not? Square root of 2, certainly it is not a whole number. Square root of 2 is a rational number or not? Can it be described as some whole number divided by some whole number? Is it possible? Okay. So, is it possible? A square root of a square root of 2. A square root of 2 is a rational number or not? Any number is a rational number when it can be represented as any whole number divided by other whole number. So, if that is the scenario, then what is the square root of 2? 
it is a rational number or not it is a rational number i consider it it is a rational number if it is a rational number now the discussion here going on that if a square root of 2 is a rational number or not i consider it is a rational number how you can say it is a rational number because it can be it can be represented as division of two whole number then a square root of 2 equal to division of two number what are those number i know it is p and q <laughs> okay so a square root of 2 equal to p by q tell me what is p and q i'll tell you what is p and q a square root of 2 equal to p by q okay if that is the case then to actually i was looking at the rational number whole number and then a square root of 2 came to my mind and i had heard it about this also i tried searching the solution on internet somewhere somewhere all are fake solution this and that imagination not nowhere it is something that is satisfying so i tried myself and this is what the solution is it is not that i copied from somewhere and i am just with a mic i am talking about it so this is our version a square root of 2 is a rational number or not a square root of 2 let's consider that square root of 2 equal to p by q then 2 equal to p square by q square p square equal to 2 q square p square minus q square equal to q square p p minus q into p plus q equal to q square p minus q into p plus q equal to q into q now q is whole number p is whole number if q into q is there both are whole number but it is not guaranteed but but it is not guaranteed they are the minimum whole number like one 2, 3 are minimum whole number. But 4 is not minimum whole number. 4 can, 4 can be represented as 2 into 2. Okay, 5 is minimum. 6 can be represented as 3 into 2. Okay, 7 is minimal. 8 can be represented as 2 into 2 into 2. 2 into 4. Like that. Now consider, let's consider. Now I have P minus Q into p plus q p square minus q square equal to q square p minus p p square equal to 2 q square p minus q p plus q equal to q into q now consider q is a bigger number like 8 or 6 so it can be represented it i can make it smaller okay so i can consider as p by q sorry q by k i bring another number k I bring another number k, another number, other, num other number k or I can say I have a small number n, number is n, n into k equal to q. I have another number that is n, n into k equal to q. Like if q is 6, 6 can be brought as 2 into 3, where n is 2 and k is 3. If that is the case, then q I can q i can rewrite as q by k if that is the case then other q i have to write as k into q q by k into k into q okay now it becomes a smaller someone can replace it with n into k no one is stopping n into k q equal to q equal to n into k or whatever it is now or i can make it a smaller q q by k if i say q by k the other will become k into q now this is kind of a smaller part we are trying to take now p minus q into p plus q equal to q by k into k q by k into k into q now here p minus q p plus q q by k k into q if that is the case then p minus q equal to q by k p plus q equal to k q or i can take other way other case we will see now p minus q equal to q by k if that is the case if i take q that side then it becomes p equal to q and in braces 1 by k plus 1 p equal to q braces 1 by k plus 1 okay p equal to q 
braces 1 by k plus 1. Now on top I have p plus q equal to q k, p equal to q k minus 1, okay, p p equal, then now I have, I have and I have q into 1 plus 1 by k, it is really difficult. So, p q into 1 plus 1 by k equal to k minus 1, q k minus 1, q q gone. Now, k has to be whole number, that is, that is guaranteed. Now, 1 plus 1 by k equal to k minus 1. 1 plus 1 by k equal to k minus 1. Now, k plus 1 equal to k square minus k. k square minus k equal to k plus 1. k square minus 2k minus 1 equal to 0. Okay. If that is the case, then k square minus 2k plus 1 minus 2 equal to 0. k minus 1 whole square equal to minus 2 equal to 2. Okay. k minus 1 whole square equal to 2. Why I am doing this much? We brought every, every focus into one number that is k. k minus 1 whole square that is k square minus 2k plus 1 equal to 2. 2 if I bring this side it becomes minus 1. Same thing it will get. So, k minus 1 whole square equal to 2. Is it possible or not? That is the question where k is a k is a whole number. If that is the case then now let us put k as 0. k as 0 then they are not equal. Let us increase k as 1 again they are not equal. Means this is lesser. 0 means it is 1. Left k minus 1 whole square it is 1 equal to 2. k is 1 then it is 0 equal to 2. k is 2 then it is 1 equal to 2. Let us increase again. k is 3 then 3 minus 1 2 to the power. It, now it is growing. It crossed it. Either it was 1 or it is 4 now. Now if I keep increasing k it becomes more and more. It can never become 2. Let us decrease it. k equal to 0 we tested. k equal to k equal to minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 2 whole square 4. Now, if I go not positive, k minus 1 whole square can never be equal to 2 if k equal to a whole number. If that is the case, then a square root can never be represented as p by q. If that is the case, then a square root is not a rational number. Amazing mind building, mind blowing. Any number we see in fraction, 1.8, 1.75, 1 1.313, everything at the end we can bring as p by q. Keep multiplying something, at the end it will reach become p by q. Okay? But a square root of 2, if someone brings in fraction, it can never be represented as p by q, not possible. So, a square root of 2 is not a rational number. Okay? Can someone try a square root of 4? square root of 4 is a rational number or not. Same way we will try. Now, square root of 4 equal to p by q. 4 equal to p by q. 4 equal to p square by q square. p square equal to 4 q square. p square minus q square equal to 3 q square. p minus q into p plus q equal to 3 q square. That I can write as 3 q. 3 q by k plus k into q, 3q by k into 3q by k into k into q. In best case, k will be 1. In, a, in previous case also, best case, k will be 1. This is what I have to bring. Okay. Then, whatever we are getting, p by q, it is not divisible. Okay. If we try in this fashion, then p minus q, p minus q into p plus q equal to 3q by 3q, 3q by k into k into q. In last example, I will try again. We did, I uh, will we'll try other way also. We tried p minus q into p plus q equal to q by k into q k. I will try other, other permutation. Anyone can try. So, 1, 1 came as 1 plus 1 by k equal to k minus 1. Now, we will try other way. P minus Q equal to 1 by K. P minus Q equal to Q. 
and p in p minus q equal to k q and p plus q equal to q by k in that in that case case it will be 1 plus k 1 plus k equal to 1 by k minus 1 other scenario someone can try 1 plus k equal to 1 by k minus 1 k square plus k 1 by k square plus k equal to 1 1 minus k so it k square plus k equal to 1 minus k k square plus 2k plus k square plus 2k equal to 1 k square plus 2k minus 1 equal to 0 k plus 1 whole square k k plus 1 whole square equal to 2 earlier k minus 1 whole square was 2 now k plus 1 whole square equal to 2 if that is the case then k plus 1 whole square equal to 2 if that is the case then we will try with the k k equal to 0 not possible k equal to 1 suddenly it is crossing it k equal to minus 1 0 k equal to minus 2 1 k equal to minus 3 again it is crossing not possible so square root is certainly it is a irrational number a square root of 4 p square minus q square equal to 3 q square 3 q by k into k into q p minus q equal to 3 q p my 3 q by 3 q by k into k into q then p equal to q q in braces and 3 by k plus 1 okay 3 3 by k plus 1 into q p equal to other side p equal to k minus 1 p plus q equal to k q p equal p equal to q and k minus 1 okay now we have 2 by k 2 by k plus 1 2 by k plus 1 equal to k minus 1 so i am in 3 it will be 3 i am sorry wherever 2 i am saying it is 3 okay now because p square minus q square equal to 3 q as well now we have 3 by k plus 1 3 by k plus 1 equal to k minus 1 so 3 3 plus k equal to k square minus 1 k square minus k k square minus k equal to k plus 3 so k square minus 2k equal to 3 k square minus 2k plus 1 equal to 4 so k minus 1 whole square equal to 4 k minus 1 whole square equal to 4 if that is the case then k is 0 then it is 1 k is 1 it is 0 k is 2 then it is 1 k is 3 then it is 4 4 equal to 4 means when k equal to when k equal to 2 indeed it is possible when k equal to 2 then it is indeed it is possible so square root of 4 can be represented as now someone can try from back side and it can indeed be represented as 4 by 2 or 2 by 1 it is indeed a rational number because we found k and k is 2 then slowly someone can get from back side that a square root of 4 is 4 by 2 now someone can try other way now we tried as k p minus q equal to 3 q by k p minus q equal to q p minus q p minus q equal to k q p minus q equal to k q p equal to q k plus 1 p equal to q k plus 1 and that side p plus q equal to i'm sorry p minus q equal to 3 q into k 3 q into k then p equal to q 3 k plus 1 3 k plus 1 and that side it will become 1 by k minus 1 1 by k minus 1 equal to 3k 3k plus 1 1 by k min 1 by k minus 1 1 minus k 
इक्वल टू थ्री के स्क्वायर प्लस के थ्री के स्क्वायर प्लस टू के इक्वल टू वन थ्री के स्क्वायर प्लस टू के इक्वल टू वन नो समन कैन चेक इज इट रियली पॉसिबल विथ एनी वैल्यू ऑफ के थ्री के स्क्वायर थ्री के स्क्वायर प्लस टू के आई बिलीव इक्वल टू वन इफ के ओके थ्री के स्क्वायर इफ के इज माइनस वन देन इट इज थ्री माइनस टू इक्वल टू वन पॉसिबल हियर ऑल्सो पॉसिबल सो स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ फोर इन डीड इट इज ए रैशनल नंबर समन कैन ट्राई अदर नंबर ऑल्सो इफ अ स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ फाइव इज रैशनल नंबर और नॉट अ स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ थ्री इज रैशनल नंबर और नॉट स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ सेवन स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ सिक्स स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ एट स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ नाइन विथ दिस वे वी ट्रस्ट स्टार्टेड विथ इफ आई हैव टू फाइंड अ पर्टिकुलर नंबर इज रैशनल नंबर और नॉट देन we can try number equal to p by q square root equal to p by q 2 equal to p square by q square p square equal to 2 q square now p and q must be a whole number in that sense now p minus p square minus q square equal to q square p minus q into p plus q equal to q into q okay let's say that p and q they are whole number but they are divisible in that case i can represent q as q by k i brought a new term k is a whole number so this number becomes q by k smaller if i make this number smaller other number i have to increase it because net multiplication should be same so q by k into k into q i can write q square now i have to find k that is a whole number so in that case for a square root we could not find but a square root of 2 we could not find but a square root of 4 we could find square root of 3 someone can try all possible permutation combination square root of 5 square root of 6 this is our place this is not available anywhere else so someone can try okay anyway we will visit now calculus again and we will try the maximization minimization where lagrange multiplier comes into the picture lambda lambda comes into the picture what is lagrange multiplier what is maximization minimization in calculus so that is a question now we are taking very famous example now in industry there is productivity there is productivity so productivity the kind of uh, or a profit so profit what company is making the profit so profit is profit is is profit p equal to x to the power 2 by 3 into y to the power 1 by 3 what is x and y x is a x is a item now the company is making some kind of alloy consider some kind of alloy where there are two metal that they are coming into the picture okay and where x is the amount of one metal and y is the amount of another metal okay x is the count of one metal whatever and y is the count of another metal if x is power 2 by 3 and y is power 1 by 3 if i do this way then profit is maximum this is what is seen now in that case what is x and what is y how much i take x x x count x item count x is a count actually x is a count or weight whatever comes to mind there is a item 1 and item 2 item 1 has x count or x amount item 2 has y count or y amount if i mix these two item one is x in amount one is y in amount then profitability is x to the power 2 by 3 and y to the power 1 by 3 for profitability is less dependent upon y are more dependent upon x x to the power 2 by 3 and y to the power 1 by 3 when profitability is maximum anyone would ask their answer is very simple right x is infinite and y is infinite then profitability is maximum but that is not the case x and y that is the amount count of one material and another material they are limited limited in the sense that x is purchased P P dollar or P rupees P dollar 
per per count p dollar per count and y is purchased q dollar per count so net purchasing the net purchase amount is p into x plus q into y this must be less than equal to 3 where 3 is in million dollar 3 is in 1 dollar 3 is in 1000 dollar whatever it is now if x is the amount y is the amount and p dollar per amount per per unit is the cost for the x and q dollar is the per uh, unit cost of the q of the y the net purchasing uh, price is p into x plus q into y less than equal to 3 that is the formula this is called maximization minimization where there is a constraint this is called constraint line okay that is x p x plus q y less than equal to 3 if i take p and q as 1 1 also then x plus y less than equal to 3 this is the limitation whereas profitability is p profitability p for profitability p is nothing but x to the power 2 by 3 into y to the power 1 by 3 now this is an assignment then someone can try how it is possible to calculate Lagrange way there is one possibility where we calculate the gradient vector of these two the constraint line and the profitability curve both if I take gradient vector then at maximization or minimization they should be in parallel to each other there is one our proof that we had proposed and that both way we will see then we will proceed into the much awaited machine learning the entering of the machine learning is bias theorem bias theorem where if we if i have a global space global space can be can be uh, can be dis dissociated can be broke up in orthogonal component orthogonal component are magicians if someone can find orthogonal component in problem domain he cracks the problem immediately like i have a i have total number of people in the world total i have x number of people in the world okay now people can be can be can be uh, distributed can be divided into orthogonal component one way is people talks many language like hindi english chinese german french this is how people talk in different language i can say this person is a chinese speaking person this person is a russian speaking person this person is an english speaking person not guaranteed that he is from england only but he is an english speaking person if that is the case then there is another orthogonal component that is called country language is one orthogonal component there is another orthogonal component is country there are countries england france germany india bangladesh pakistan china russia united states canada mexico brazil like there are many countries every country has different language but language can be spoken in other country national also like german is spoken in other country than germany also. in switzerland also people talk in german okay or in France also, I believe little bit people would be knowing the Germany and they are French people. Okay, if that is the scenario, then we have at least two orthogonal components. One is language orthogonal component, one is country orthogonal component, two orthogonal components. Now, if I have one orthogonal component, then based upon that, what is the percentage of other orthogonal component inside it? If I know if, if I have a one orthogonal component as German is speaking, then what is a what is the possibility that person is a Swiss? This is a famous example. If person is a German is speaking or person, person, Pakistan people generally take as people are Urdu speaking. So among the Urdu speaking, what is the probability that he is a Afghan? This person is living in Afghanistan, very less probability, but still. Or Afghanistan, among the Afghanistan, what is the possibility that person is Urdu speaking? If among the, if I talk about the country wise, 
then in Afghanistan, if person is Afghan, then what is the possibility that he is probability that he is Urdu speaking? Or if among the Urdu speaking, what is the probability that he is Afghan? It is not that simple because these are two orthogonal components. From here, machine learning begins. And then we see bias theorem where we talk about orthogonal component means the, the if you talk about probability, then they are independent to each other. Independence brings orthogonality. That is the calculus algebra. In calculus x-axis, y-axis, z-axis, if I talk about independent, independent component, they talks in probability, they match in probability as independence to each other as far as their occurrence is concerned. That also we will talk, but we will first will proceed in Lagrange way. Please support us, plus 91 India country code 9483160610 is the telephone number. Plus 91, 948, plus, plus, Plus nine plus nine four. I'm so, sorry. The number is nine four eight three one six zero six one zero. Plus nine one is the India country code nine four eight three one six zero six one zero. Okay, so we will talk more on it.